How's it going you guys? Today in this miraculous video I'm going to be talking a little bit more about projection. This is Wolfgang von Lattman Lozana with ChaliceofImmortality.com I have a gigantic pimple up on my forehead but don't focus on it too much because this information is too valuable for that. That's what happens when you don't wash your face after exercising vigorously and sweating. The one thing, the one type of acne that diet can't cure. <laughs> That's all hygiene right there. Sip it on some delicious yerba mate, a little bit of honey. All right, listen. Projection is essentially a defense mechanism that your consciousness provides so that when you have deep-seated shame, trauma, or flaws within you, you project those flaws and criticisms and the shame, you project those judgments onto other people so that you don't have to address those things within yourself. Because when you focus so much on other people having those problems, it makes you feel much better about your own issues. Kind of like if you look at other people and their unfortunate problems, it makes you feel better about, it makes your problems feel less, okay? So, if you have problems with self-discipline, you'll constantly be pointing out the lack of discipline in other people. And the more undisciplined these people are, the better you'll feel about your own lack of discipline, okay? So, where does this come from? Well, the vast majority of projection originates in deep-seated traumas from childhood. For example, if a mother tells, if your mom tells you when you're young, when you're like three years old, that sex is bad and uh, sex is a devil and it'll, and if you have sex, it'll kill you, okay? That's gonna stick with you whether you realize it or not up until your adulthood, okay? this a lot of times manifests itself in weird perceptions of sexual intercourse where people think that um, you know where people just go on being virgins for their entire life thinking that either sex is bad or that um, just not having a normal sex life or else they think that they should only have sex if they're married and they don't have any logical explanation as to why um, other than maybe religion or like, oh, like because it's bad, it's promiscuous or whatever. When the reality is it's, not, it's neither good or bad uh, as long as you consider certain factors like, you know, putting on a condom and this and that, etc. The point that I'm trying to make though is that um, it's conditioning, okay, during childhood that creates irrational perspectives and beliefs about yourself and about other people and then when you get to be an adult you project these feelings and you project these beliefs on other people okay um so like fat people all right and 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 you know i train a lot of fat people i have a lot of friends who are overweight and i try to help everyone as best as i can i have nothing against fat people obviously but this is a descriptive term okay fat people a lot of times um, not all of them, but the ones that are, that are just, you know, they're in denial over their problem, right? They want to believe that being fat is healthy and this and that, right? So fat people, a lot of times, you'll see them come on, um, healthy eating videos or something, and they'll say that, um, healthy eating is a eating disorder, and that it's unhealthy to obsess about food and they'll try to convince, uh, they'll try to, they'll tell other people that it sounds miserable because they're trying to convince themselves that their lifestyle is good and your lifestyle is bad. So they try to project um, superiority onto other people like, oh, I'm good because I eat um, a lot of crazy foods and stuff that makes me feel good and it must be miserable to live without those foods you know these are the people that say oh I couldn't I couldn't imagine you know living without 
Skittles and 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 Oreos and whatnot. You know, uh, like, geez, life must be so hard for you because all you eat is, you know, traditional Chinese food, stir fries, rice, meat, and vegetables and fruits. You know, that just sounds horrible, even though you use like millions of different spices and you're like a a, a damn chef, Wolfgang, but that sounds horrible. Healthy food sucks. It's so expensive. They try to say, oh, healthy food is so expensive. My $5 latte from fucking Starbucks with, you know, five pumps of syrup and double scoop the whipping cream, you know, that shit is, you know, my Starbucks is so much cheaper than if I was to get, you know, a pound of, of hamburger from the store for three bucks. You know, they try to project these weird ideas on other people. Now, this is a more advanced form of projection, but in my opinion, it's all the same. It's denial, it's delusion, and it's projecting um, delusions onto reality to make their life feel better. It's, it's a defense mechanism um, that says, my problems are nothing compared to your problems, you know. Oh yeah, well look at you, you know. Blah, 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 blah. And so you'll know that you're projecting when you're, con when, ev when you're constantly judging other people. When you just can't help yourself, right? Now, everybody does this to a degree. Well, not everybody, but, you know, this is a common phenomena even amongst people with a healthy awareness, with a healthy self-awareness, okay? Because um, we're faced with so many conflicting personalities and differing beliefs throughout the day and throughout our lives as virtually impossible not to place judgment on other people. Uh, but the problem lies when we're in denial over where these judgments come from and to, to what extent is, are these judgments realistic, you know? Um, for example, I had a friend for a long time who I constantly was, um, pointing out like his weird illogical inconsistencies like he always said like he's gonna buy this car and he put it as a screensaver on his phone he never ended up buying that car and he always said oh I'm gonna get a job and get a job never got a job um, would spend hours and hours researching jobs like at Starbucks but never actually got a job which is weird just like wasting time procrastinating prolonging the solution and for me um, especially because he's one of my best friends, I think on one level I really want him to actually go through with things because I knew that he was just wasting time. I want him to reach his greatest potential. Um, on another level, um, obviously it's very hard for me to see that because I felt like he was rotting and he was, time was just going on, he wasn't getting any better. But I think at the same time there was also an unconscious um, desire in myself to, to better those things in myself. I think that it was a form of projection, especially because it bothered me so much, I couldn't let it go. Every single time I saw him, I couldn't help point out his, his flaws. And, you know, the projection is, is specific to what's inside of you. So I'm pointing out um, basically that he always talks about being successful and wanting success, but then he never actually takes action. And so that was a specific thing I was projecting onto him. And it's true though, this is the thing though, like you select your targets and your judgments are usually pretty accurate, but it's not a matter of, well, well, you know, it's the reality, like he, he all, these, all my judgments are correct, my criticisms are valid. It's a matter of, you know, this is how I feel about myself and, um, I'm constantly pointing the finger at people who have these problems to take those fingers away from myself. So you're, bl you're, you're pointing out other people's flaws to keep you from uh, solving your own issues. And so, again, it's fine to notice these things in other people. In fact, many psychologists believe that this whole projection uh, is actually to help you realize, realize that in yourself. Um, so you can actually address these problems. It's a way of your brain realizing what it needs to work on. Bye. Goodbye. Have a good day at work, Selena. Kiss me on the lips, faggot. See, I'm projecting my homosexuality onto her. <laughs> you know, call. Right you are. Yeah, I'm actually homosexual, Selena. I'm sorry. Bye. Bye, Lupita. Love you. 
anyway, um, so a great, <laughs> a, a great example of projection that I'm faced with constantly is, um, well, for one, some people might look at, um, they might look at, like, I guess, like, me kissing my girlfriend on camera and telling her goodbye. And they might think of that as, like, oh, like, come on, like, you, you know, I, we know you have a girlfriend, like, do you really have to kiss her, like, on camera? Like, oh my god, that's disgusting, like, that's cringe, it makes me cringe, like, I mean, first of all, that sounds like, most people probably think you're an ugly person for thinking that. That's just bitterness, and it's unnecessary, and doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, usually when you judge people, it serves a purpose in yourself somehow. And so what, what purpose does that serve for, for that person? If you're thinking like, oh, he's kissing his girlfriend on camera, like, like you really, you, you have to do that, like show off, blah, blah, blah. Like what that probably is, is a, is a projection of your lack of confidence, lack of self-esteem, and possibly a feeling of loneliness. Because you probably feel deep inside yourself that, you know, like, oh my God, like, you know, people don't like me. I can't get a girlfriend. Like, why does he get a girlfriend but not me? Shit like that. Um, and, and you know, for me, um, you know, when I hear these things, obviously the solution is just to work on yourself, obviously. There's many books. There's many lectures. There's videos on YouTube. I've made plenty of videos on this subject of how to heal those self-esteem issues and how to uh, connect with other people that resonate with you. Because that's more of what it is. Everybody is, is worthy of having friends and relationships in their life. It's just a matter of seeing that worthiness in yourself. And usually when people think like, oh, like, you know, I'm not worthy of relationship, it's because they're, project, they're projecting um, their problems onto, they're projecting their, their insecurities onto other people. Because they feel worthless, they automatically assume everyone else uh, sees them as worthless, and so they act that way. And this is also a mechanism for, the, for how the law of attraction works, you know, the, the secret or whatever is, you know, how you see yourself really, do, really does create your world and vice versa. Literally, the summary here is, we don't see the world the way it is. We see the world the way we are on the inside, okay? And when you start to see projection in your daily life, and you start to, when you start to see that you're projecting your feelings and beliefs on other people, when you start to see that, when you start to see how other people are a reflection of your inside, then the law of attraction starts to make sense to you. And really, um, you, you really learn that you are externalizing your power the entire time you're projecting. That's what, that's what your, your, your real power is here, is that you literally create conflicts with other people. And your, your conflicts with other people are a reflection of, of your inner workings and how you deal with these things. And the same thing goes for other people, you know, difficult people in life, people, you know, people who are just like, they're, they lack understanding, they're not willing to coexist with you, they're suffering. This all comes from suffering, comes from shame, and they're probably projecting a lot onto you. Maybe they're projecting the stress onto you. Like, this is another thing. Um, is that, so like somebody with a really stressful life, uh, well, pff, remember you create your own stress, but basically, you know, let's say that you had a long day at work and you're just like tired and you feel miserable and then like you come home to your spouse and they greet you with open arms, you're happy to see you and then you're just like so stressed from work, you're just like, uh, like, how's it going? Like, nice to see you. And then they're like, oh, tell me about your day. And then you just start freaking out. And like maybe you start to rant at them. Like you, you start nitpicking your spouse, even though they're not doing anything. You start to find things to yell at them at, yell at them about. You're projecting your stress from work onto your significant other. Okay. Now, obviously, everybody has things they need to work on. And there's probably some very valid um, issues that your spouse needs to work on. But 
there is a productive way to interact with your spouse and try to get them to do things and then there's an unproductive way and the unproductive way is yelling at them is getting angry at them is arguing with them if you're constantly conflicting with your significant other the first thing you have to look at is um, why are you angry because anger is really the greatest projection of them all and this in anger anything anything to say about like anger being useless or or this or that it's all about projection where is that coming from inside of you anger is not productive it can be controlled it's literally it's a useless emotion and it's created from inside of you the only use it has is for you it's because you need to reflect um, and, we, and when you're angry it's a, it's projection to the maximum almost always okay anger builds up and builds up like a pot of steam eventually the steam is gonna boil over and spill out the, the pan um, and that's very very easy to cause issues with your spouse okay and when you're when you're taking that anger from the day and it's spilling over you're gonna be yelling at your, your spouse you're gonna be yelling at your co-workers and you're definitely going to be road raging road rage is probably the biggest example and for me it's very hard to deal with driving just because it's like an outlet for people to vent their frustrations with their lives and their misery. Um, you know, especially when they're stuck in traffic, it's because usually they're, that's like, they're stuck, they're just like stuck in traffic around a bunch of other people who are stuck in traffic. You're fed up, everyone else is fed up, and, and, and I don't deal with this anymore because I've worked through this. But everyone's fed up, and everyone just wants to get to work, and they can't. And that represents like the majority of people's life on the road. They're like, like at their home life, they're like, fuck, like I just wanna have like a good relationship with my wife, but she's always yelling at me and like I don't ever have sex with her and um, you know, like my kids won't let me sleep and like I have no money and like oh, I, I gotta get to work on time and all these people around me, they're just fucking with me. And then it just like it causes people to snap because they have all these problems that they just let they just let these problems build up and they're constantly trying to delude themselves delude themselves and this is where a, like the majority of projection comes from it causes problems in politics and science and religion especially in our day-to-day -day lives and it prevents us from talking to one another in a civil fashion and now they're going to project their anger onto the other, driver, other drivers. And they're going to be lucky if they go the next two years without dying of a car accident, dying of a damn heart attack because of all that stress and all the food they probably eat because of that stress. Um, they're going to get slammed with more, more tickets and bills and stuff. And it's just a horrible situation. And if you can see, like, this projection causes so much issues in people's lives. So when you can dissect this, right? So, so what, do you, what do you need to do? You need to start to, anytime you start to say, man, fuck that guy, I hate that guy, or like start to judge people, start to talk. When you start to talk about people, you need to start to think um, about yourself. You need to apply, just start to like, okay, well, if you say like, oh, that guy's fat, fuck, you know, blah, blah, blah. Start to look at yourself, wait a second, am I fat? I am fat. Like, when you judge other people, use those same judgments on yourself and see what happens. Question these things. Ask yourself, am I, you know, am I these things I'm talking about? You know, like if you're, if you're saying like, oh, like these vegan people, they don't know what they're talking about. You have to start to ask yourself, wait a second, do I know exactly what I'm talking about? You know, all oh, these people are rational. They don't read the studies. Wait a second, do I read the studies? Because I see this all the time, you know. Everyone wants to believe that they're that they're right and everyone else is wrong and the fact is We all have valid things to say some people research more than others, but You know instead of look instead of trying to pretend that you have the truth The best thing is just to discuss your what you know discuss the information and really read things just be intellectually honest So you really gotta just be honest with yourself and you've got to be aware of yourself and you've got to listen to what you talk, what you, how you judge other people and really try to be aware of those things in yourself. If you're constantly talking about how lazy someone is or how, how much of an asshole they are, how angry they are 
or how 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 much of a failure they are, you've got to start to look at those things in yourself. Because I see, I've seen all my life, um, the biggest criticizers are the ones with the most problems. And right now, I'm I'm placing judgment on people just saying that, and you know, thinking back, I know that I've criticized a lot of people, and most of the time when I'm doing that, I can see that the things I was criticizing people for, I was also guilty of. So, you know, criticizing people, you're gonna do that, but you've got to be aware of the same things in yourself and, and try to stop yourself. Try not to criticize people. When you catch yourself criticizing people, just stop. You gotta build, you gotta ru ruin that habit. You gotta just remove that habit and uh, replace it, you know? Just stop criticizing people. Stop shaming people. When you look at the YouTube comments, like people telling me, like, put on a shirt. Like, oh, but you think you're so cocky wearing a shirt. It's like, or, or not wearing a shirt, right? You're so, sh you're, you're shirtless. You know, you think you're so cool because you got muscles, Wolfgang. You know, people say that in my videos sometimes. And I don't understand why anyone cares whether I wear a shirt or not, especially because in my videos you can not even see like the top, you can only see the top of my body. Usually, it, you know, my, I, I just kind of assume that this person's insecure uh, because for me, like, I mean, I think I'm very attractive, but I'm, I know I'm not buff, I'm not muscular. And when I'm wearing, when I'm not wearing a shirt, it's probably just because I felt like making a video at a period of time where I was shirtless. And I didn't care about putting a shirt on. I cared more about putting out information. It's kind of pathetic that people have to, you know, uh, criticize me for not wearing a shirt. Like, I'm not doing anyone any harm. So, like, they're threatened by my lack of shirt. It, it's, again, a reflection of what's going on inside of them. It's a projection. Um, you know, and then people just tell me, like, oh, you, you try to sound smart, but you're not actually smart. And that's really weird to me because I don't even, like, try to do anything. I'm just talking. I'm literally thinking out loud. And if, I, if I'm sounding smart to you, maybe it's because you actually think I'm smart. So why, what would drive somebody to say that I'm trying to sound smart? Well, it's because they're trying to make me sound dumb to themselves so that they feel smarter than me. It's a, super, it's a superiority complex with all forms of projection. You're trying to feel like you're like you're somehow above me. You're trying to degrade me to upgrade yourself. And so, um, most of the time, the only person that can conquer projection is the person projecting, uh, because it's a for, it's a self defense mechanism, and those almost always or a form of denial and delusion. And somebody in denial, like their brain is purposely trying to keep them stuck there. Like it serves a purpose. It's to prevent, the, it's probably because the suffering and misery that they're facing is so great that it would hurt them more to face the, the truth than to keep on being deluded. So they've got to just get tired of, of living a life of delusion and denial. Um, and they've got to actually want to accept the truth. And most people don't. Like most people, they're just so stuck in their own bullshit that they can't get out of it. Um, you know, either because it's been so long, it's just a deeply ingrained habit, or because it, it just... It hurts them more to admit the truth. Like if their mom died or something and they want to believe that God exists to make them feel better, um, death is a very hard pill to swallow. And so that's why a lot of people just crawl towards religion because it helps ease the pain. And if you remove religion, they're going to have an identity crisis and it's going to be horrible. And, and that's really why most cognitive biases exist. Like, um, you know, vegans who think that veganism is the best thing ever and then like 10 years later like they're like holy crap like they're dying and shit um and many people have actually many ex-vegans have came out and realized this we have hundreds of these testimonials on the internet now but most vegans don't want to admit it to themselves and they they just say these people do it wrong it's because 
it's an identity crisis for them to admit that veganism is not the best thing on the on the planet it would mean that who they are is wrong so they can't accept that what they've been doing for years is wrong so they'd rather just deny it and live in delusion same thing goes for people who practice bullshit martial arts like aikido you know um, like they do that shit for so long thinking that they're Steven Seagal and they can whoop like millions of ninjas asses and shit with Aikido and then um, whenever they get exposed or they get challenged to a fight like they have some weird like ego problem and they just can't accept that their martial art is bullshit and they just look like children to the people who actually fight and know the truth and it's really crazy how deluded they can delude themselves but it's true um, and that's this all is projection and it's really fascinating because when you start to see this you're like whoa the whole fucking world is in denial it's really crazy maybe I'm the one who's in denial right maybe I'm the crazy one leave your questions and comments down below let me know what you think and tell me how have you been projecting? Tell me, do you think I'm projecting? Let me know. I need to be aware of these things. Fun fact, when you're aware of projection, criticisms don't really bother you as much. 